Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this particular video, what we gotta do is factor each of these expressions here if it is possible. So what we gotta do is take out greatest common factors. So let's start off with part A, we got 16x plus 24y. So the first thing I would start off with is the integers. And notice from 16 and 24, what's the greatest common factor for both of those? Well, it's gonna be eight, right? Eight goes into 16 and 24 smoothly. And then notice that the X and the Y, those are different variables. So we can't take anything out in terms of the variable. So what would we be left with? Well, what you can do is you could take that original expression and then just divide all of the parts by the greatest common factor that you're taking out. So notice 16x divided by eight would give you what? 2x and then 24y divided by eight would give you 3y. So that's what we would be left with in the bracket like that. And then if you wanna check your answer, you could take this, you could expand it, right? Because remember factoring is the opposite of expanding. So you could go back the other way. You could expand it inside the bracket make sure you get that original expression, All right? So that's the answer to part A. Part B, we got 4x minus 7y. So let's start off with the numbers, four and seven. Is there a greatest common factor there? No, there isn't. And then x and y, those are different variables, so we can't factor out in terms of anything with the variable. So this, it's actually not possible to factor, right? You can't factor that expression right there. Let's move on to part C, 5xy plus 8xz, five and eight, no common factor there. Notice both of these have an x, so we could definitely take out an x, and then notice here we have a y, and then here we have a z. So there's no y in this expression, and there's no z in this expression, so in terms of the y and the z, can't take anything out, but we could take out this x that's common in between, uh, common between both of them. So to figure out what is left inside this bracket, just on the side here, you could just divide both expressions by what you're taking out. Notice the X would cancel out, the X would cancel out. So we'd be left with five Y plus eight Z. So this would be five Y plus eight Z like that. So that's the answer to part C. Moving on to part D, 6m squared minus 7m to the 5, 6 and 7, can't do nothing in terms of the numbers, but notice we got m to the 2, m to the 5. And if you remember, if you have the same variable with different exponents, what you wanna take out, the greatest common factor is going to be that variable to the lowest of those exponents. So between two and five, notice that two is the lowest exponent. So we can definitely take out an m to the power of two. And so just on the side here to see what we would be left with inside the bracket, we could just divide everything by what we took out. Notice here, we would be left with nothing but a six, right? Cause M to the two divided by M to the two, those just cross out. Here, we'd be left with seven and then M to the five over M to the two. When you're dividing here, you can subtract the exponents, five minus two that would give you three. So we'd be left with six minus seven M to the three in the brackets. If you take this, expand it inside the bracket, you should end up with that same expression. And then part E, 14 X to the three plus 21 X. Between 14 and 21, notice there is a common factor seven goes into both smoothly. So we could definitely take out a seven. And then we have X to the three and X, this is like to the one. So both of them contain the same variable, take out the lowest exponent, which is one between them. So we could take out a seven X. What would we be left with? Well, on the side here, let's take both expressions and divide it by what we're taking out. So notice 14 divided by seven would give us two x to the three over x to the one, subtract the exponents, three minus one would give you two. Then we have plus 21 divided by seven will give you three, and then the x's cancel out here. So we're just left with a three right there. So in the bracket, we'd have two x squared 
plus three, like that. And then if we re-expand this, seven x times two x squared would give us 14 x cubed. Seven x times three would give us 21 x. So that's the answer to part E. Part F, 2x squared minus 4x plus 12. Notice with all the numbers, we could definitely take out a 2. But notice that not all the expressions have an x. We have an x to the 2 here, x to the 1, but there's no x over here. And all of them have to contain some kind of x variable in order to take it out, or any variable in order to take it out. So we can't take out an x because of this 12. That's by itself. So all we could do is uh, take out a 2. So we'd be left with, so let's rewrite this over here. What we're doing, we're taking out a two, divide everything by two, these cancel out, we got x squared, four x divided by two gives us two x, 12 divided by two would give us six. So that's the expression that we would be left with in the bracket. Now moving on to part G, we got four x cubed minus six x to the six plus 10 x squared. So over here, let's start with the numbers, four, six, eight, all of those can definitely be divided by two. So that is one factor. And then notice all of them also contain x. We got x to the three, x to the six, x to the two. Which of those is the smallest exponent? It's the two. So the greatest common factor between all these is two x squared. So what would we be left with? Well, same process. By the way, you don't have to do this on this side. Maybe after a while, you're going to get fairly comfortable in knowing what ends up being in that bracket. But when you're starting out, I'd recommend doing it this way. It takes a little bit longer, but it really makes you ensure that you don't make a mistake or the chances of making a mistake are a lot lower. So starting here, 4 divided by 2 would give us 2 x to the 3 over x to the 2 would give us x to the 1, so it's just x. Then we got minus 6 over 2, 3. x to the 6 over x to the 2 would give us x to the 4. And then plus, what's 10 divided by 2, 5. Notice the x2s cancel out right there. And so in the bracket, we'd be left with 2x minus 3x to the 4 plus 5 like that. Right, and with fairly complex ones like this, again, you could just check your answer. 2x squared times 2x gives us 4x cubed. 2x squared times negative 3x to the 4 would give us negative 6x to the 6, right? x to the 2 times x to the 4, you add the exponents. Then 2x squared times 5 would give us 10x squared. All right, and then part h here, we got negative 2x cubed plus 8x to the 5 minus 16x to the 8. So notice in this case, there's a negative in front. Personally, what I like to do if I get an expression like this and I have a negative in front, you could also rearrange it and put a positive in front. But if they require you to keep it in the same order, I personally like to take negatives out. So we got before looking at the negative, let's look at just the 2, 8, and 16. Notice all of those have a common factor of 2. So we could definitely take that out. But because there's a negative in front, I'm actually going to take out negative 2. I'll also do it with a positive if you're just going to take out a positive value. Personally, I'll take out a negative. We got x to the 3, x to the 5, x to the 8, lowest exponent, x to the 3. So we're taking on negative two x to the three. So when you're taking out a negative, it's a little bit more tricky. It's not too bad. Basically all the signs are gonna change. Okay, because you're gonna be dividing this by negative two x to the three, negative two x to the three, and then negative two x to the three. Now notice here, give me a sec, yes. So notice here, Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just positive 1. x to the 3 over x to the 3 is just positive 1 as well. So over here, we're just left with a 1. It's not a 0. It's a 1. This divided by this is 1. So we have a 1 over here. Then we have 8 divided by negative 2, which would give us minus 4. x to the 5 over x to the 3 gives us x to the 2. Subtracting the exponents. Negative 16 divided by negative 2 gives us positive 8. x to the 8 over x to the 3 gives us x 
to the 5. So we'd be left with 1 minus 4x squared plus 8x to the 5, like that. Right, and then just double checking this. Negative times positive gives us negative, 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 positive, negative, positive gives us that negative, and then all the exponents work out. Right, so that's how you could factor with a negative. It's just all the signs change. Notice negative to positive, positive to negative, negative to positive. Now, if you wanted to, and you wanted to take out a positive 2x cubed instead, well, all the signs here would just change. We'd have minus, plus, and then minus, like that. Right, so it would be 2x cubed negative 1 plus 4x squared minus 8x to the 5, if you want to do it like that, right? Or your textbook may also have a solution like that. Personally, if they want you to keep it in this order and there's a negative in front here, usually I'll take out the, uh, the negative value. And sometimes there won't even be, like let's say this was like a 3, 3, 8, and 16 don't have a common factor, but if there was still a negative, then I would just take a negative 1 out. And this would be negative x cubed in front, but we were able to take out a 2 here as well. All right, so those are the solutions.